Lesson three, can God use me for big things? We want to say no, but this story says yes. It's called the Annunciation. It's about when the angel Gabriel came and announced to Mary that she was going to be pregnant with God's son. It begins in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. You see, there's nothing in Mary's biography that would merit such a grand announcement. She was a virgin, which we think of as a compliment, and it is, but, but it also means she's inexperienced. She's engaged to a man named Joseph who was a carpenter, a, a, a day laborer. He had no power, had no wealth. And they're from Nazareth, a place criticized throughout the region as a, as a backwater. And yet, the angel Gabriel says, O oh, favored one. And the way it's phrased in Greek, it means she has already been favored. It's not based on what she's done, or not based on what she will do, but based on God's choice of her. Well, she's wondering, like, what does this all mean? Gabriel goes on, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Gabriel could not have painted Jesus in a more superlative light. His name, Jesus, means Yahweh saves. He will be great. He will be a son of the Most High God. His kingdom will have no end. He sits on the throne of the greatest king of Israel, David. And Mary rightly asks, how? How in the world is this possible? Because there's such a divide between her biography and the call of God on her life. How will this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. Whenever there's a gap between what God calls us to do and what we've already done, our past and God's calling, our biography, and God's vision. We need two things. Mary needed the same two things. A reason to believe and a relationship to sustain. The reason to believe for her was another miraculous birth. Her relative Elizabeth, in her old age, conceived. And a relationship to sustain. Mary's going to go from Nazareth about 70 miles to Judea and spend the next few months with her relative so that she can see what God is doing in Elizabeth, so she can believe what God is doing with her. And you need those same two things, a reason to believe and a relationship to sustain. And God will, as surely as he gave that to Mary, give it to you for whatever he's calling you to do. The angel goes on, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Nothing is impossible with God. But it does require something of you. The same thing as it required of Mary. Notice what she said, let it be to me. In the Greek, that is a phrase that means I wish it or I hope it. She is hoping that God's will would come true in her life, knowing that that could mean the end of her marriage, knowing that it would mean mockery in her village, knowing that it would be a difficult road to follow. But if you're willing to say to God, let it be to me, then nothing he calls you to will be impossible for you, and he will provide you a reason to believe and a relationship to sustain.